Welcome back my fellow makers, it's Matt from Keep Making. I'm going to be showing you how I painted all 63 and some over there of these zombie miniatures for Zombicide. Let's get to it. So first things first, we're going to clean up the models. You should do this with all the models you're painting, especially if they're coming from board games. That sort of plastic uh, is, you know, want to leave um, mold lines and sort of, uh, you know, even the injection spots where they're uh, actually casting the plastic. You got some pock marks there, um, and then obviously those those really awful mold lines. You want to take those out. So I'm using an X-Acto knife here, and then just a sanding twig. That's just sandpaper on a little stick. Um, and then just cleaning up all the models I like to do them in order um, That way, you know, you're looking for the same spots on each model. So uh, Just a little bit easier there putting them all in the hot water and soap giving them a little uh, rinse We're trying to get all that mold release agent or any sort of grease that's been on there if You've been playing with them beforehand type of thing uh, just so that we get a clean adhesion with the primer Give them a little rinse off uh, just to get any soap off and then I'm just going to leave them to dry for I think a couple hours I did. Uh, once they're all dry, using some sticky tack, I am just absolutely covering this Lazy Susan. I'm going to take it outside uh, and hit it with some primer. Uh, and I want to do these all at once, uh, just so I'm being the most efficient. This is actually a commission piece. Um, and so, you know, uh, time is money. <laughs> so as long as you can maintain uh, your same sort of quality of painting, uh, that you and the you know customer have agreed on um, where you're cutting time that's just going to save you money such so you're you're spending less time and making more money um, so uh, where you can find those sort of shortcuts you should take them uh, as long as you're not jeopardizing the overall quality so uh, i prime these in a skeleton bone primer i thought that's what the client may have wanted for the skin tone but then we later discussed and decide something more gray so here i am um hitting the uh, all the skin areas um, with this gray, this is a light blue gray from Vallejo Air, Model Air, I think, or Game Air. I'm not even sure. Uh, <laughs> I could leave it down in the description. Uh, and so for the bigger models, I'm trying to save on the paint. So I'm just hitting the specific uh, skin areas. And then everywhere else, I am just hitting them all over because um, these are going to get a pretty good painting. So the next step was to sort of get some more detail into the skin tone and I'm doing that with a black wash here. So I'm going over all the areas that we just painted gray. Um, you know, obviously if you don't have an airbrush, you could do that by hand as well. <laughs> It'd take a little bit more time, uh, but here I'm doing all this by hand. There's no way for me to sort of cut corners on this one. So um, I'm going model to model to model, trying to keep the same models as a group. Uh, that way, uh, a little less brain power involved with the areas you need to hit. Uh, you're doing the same ones over and over. Um, so we'll go in with this. This is sort of bring some of the details out in the skin. And then later on, we're going in with a Screaming Skull from Citadel. Uh, sort of off-white with a little bit more yellow tone in there. Um, and we're just going to be using this as a dry brush. So if you don't know what a dry brush is, uh, we're not sort of, um, you know, thinning the paint with water or anything going straight. Uh, onto the brush and then we're wiping most of it off onto a paper towel and just what's left on the brush We're just going to be lightly sort of grazing over the areas of the skin or where we want to hit uh, And it'll sort of just hit the, the very edges and bring out the highlight here. So you can see me doing that here And again, I'm just going again <laughs> staying efficient as possible uh, just back to back to back doing the same models if I can uh, and you see these ones I'm actually going to be placing off screen uh, and sort of lining them up a little differently after this stage um, I have to separate the models uh, not into the big unit of 63, but into I think nine individual units of seven. So uh, That's what's next So again sticking to those same groups of models uh, this time I'm going to be coming in with a red wash uh, and this is going into the open wound areas. I know a little bit gross, 
but uh, anywhere that's sort of bleeding or <laughs> uh, open wounds, because they're zombies, obviously, uh, and in the mouths as well. Um, so I do go over this uh, a little bit later on in the process, as you see with some of the blood effects, but uh, for now it, it works good and you could leave it. Um, it really, a really gruesome effect. Uh, it, you know, it was pretty unsettling to look at over and over again. I had some, some weird dreams of these guys, <laughs> especially the wounded areas and stuff like that. But uh, so red wash to go into all the wounds. So at this point we're done with the skin tone for now uh, and we're going to be going in and base coating all of these individual groups. So I'm working with all seven of them at a time and then moving on to the next group. So they're all getting sort of drab, uh, brownish, gray, uh, you know, not very flamboyant colors. Even the, the sort of brighter purple and blue I do for some of the dresses later on, uh, even those I'm mixing in with the brown and the black and a gray just to make sure they're sort of muted tones. Uh, not taking away from the skin tone or blending in too much with the skin tone and to sort of really sell the that these are like the common folk uh, you know villagers of the medieval era in which this game takes place so uh, don't judge me for my posture in this time lapse uh, working on it um, so even when we base coat them when we're done that uh, all of the models are being hit with a strong tone wash from army painter and that's just a really thick um, brown wash uh, it's really going to sell the, the commoner effect and also that these are zombies that have been dragging themselves through, you know, uh, these medieval streets uh, to, you know, hunt down their prey. So uh, we're hitting every model with that. Uh, unfortunately, it does leave a glossy finish, and so we'll need to combat that later on, but we'll get there. Okay, so here's the current state of our zombies. So you can see uh, all the colors are pretty much where I want them. Uh, I haven't put any blood effects on. That will come in the next step. Uh, but for right here, as you can see, this guy uh, is picking up on the camera pretty well, actually. This is a way too glossy. So the colors are where I want them, but the... Um, the finish is not exactly where it needs to be so uh, that's because of the strong tone i went heavy on it um wanted to make these guys look dirty and drab um and so that's why that is the way it is uh, so if you're using this as a reference um uh, th this is something you'll need to look out for so uh how i'm going to combat this problem uh, and this is a problem i knew i would have uh, based off how i was going to be using the strong tone um and so i'm prepared for it uh but just in case uh, you don't know, <laughs> uh, this is how you would go about doing that. So we're too glossy. We need to bring back a matte finish to this. So uh, I'll be using this matte varnish uh, from Vallejo through my airbrush. Uh, if you don't have an airbrush, uh, these do come as aerosols as well. Um, and you could use that. Um, you could also hand paint them on. I advise against that. I'm painting on these varnishes uh, you'll definitely get brush textures in there. So, uh, I mean, that's something cool if you're trying to go for a sort of a transparent texture. Um, that could be something cool you could use, but uh, if you're just wanting to get an overall finish, you'll want to apply these um, through some sort of spray. So, either an aerosol or through your airbrush. Um, if this I find on the first few models I do is too thick, uh, I'll just be using some of this Flow Aid. Uh, this is just Vallejo, or no, sorry. Uh, Liquitex Flow Aid. Um, I just put it into a dropper bottle, makes it a little bit easier for me for my airbrush. Uh, and then once this is done, we'll be going on to the blood effects, then painting the bases, doing some of their glowing eyes. Uh, that's what the client requested. Uh, and so that's the next steps. So here we go.
Okay, so moving on to the sort of gory blood effects on these guys. Uh, so I'm going to be using this um, blood effects paint from Vio Game, uh, as well as that same red wash um, in areas where we may have missed before, or uh, areas that just need some more color to them. So um, this blood effects, um, if you don't have this available to you, from what I can tell, this is essentially just uh, you know a dark red paint um, with a very uh, heavy gel medium, um, acrylic medium. So. Um, if you don't have this specific product, uh, you can just go about making your own. Um, and then to get the sort of blood splatter effects, um, we're going to be using uh, just, you know, a drop of gory red paint from Vallejo. And then I put it on a flat brush, soak it in with some water, and then just sort of flick it. So you can see my desk uh, it gets pretty, and I didn't pick up on this early enough. So uh, that did become an issue later on. I put down a paper plate, uh, just try to soak it, but it looks like something terrible happened at my work station so if that's something you want to avoid make sure you're prepared for that preemptively so once I'm done the blood effects I'm just painting the bases all over black um, some of them I did leave uh, I wanted the blood effects to show on the bases as if it was like dripping off of the zombies or whatever or they were like in a pool of it so here's how we looked before the blood effects and the basing and here's how we looked after A little bit more character uh, you can see those wounds are really starting to pop uh, they look a lot more intimidating but we're missing one thing and that is the glowing eye effect so we want the necromancer to have sort of like a glowing green staff and so we'll paint these eyes glowing green as well so I'm taking an olive paint I'm watering it down uh, thinning it down a lot almost to a glaze we're putting that in the entire eye socket or sorry just the eyeball for that one and then for the sort of neon green very bright green here uh, we're gluing that through the whole eye socket so uh, the dark Darker color will be in the eye, lighter color is sort of the surrounding area to give that glow. And then in the very middle of the eyeball, uh, we're just going to be putting a little dot of white uh, so the eyes sort of uh, sell the effect that they're the light source. And then we're going to be doing it 62 more times. <laughs> So as you can imagine, this project was pretty monotonous at time, but uh, you know, still enjoying uh, the process of uh, painting and problem solving, trying to find you know quicker ways to do everything. And, uh, the customer really seems to like them, so I'm happy about that. Sad to see them go. I wish I could use them for like a D&D game or something like that. It would've been fun. But here's how they turned out. Uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked about how they turned out. That'll do it for this video guys, thank you so much for checking it out and if you liked it make sure you hit the thumbs up button, if you loved it make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hitting the bell so you're notified when my videos do come out. Whether you're doing something for commission or just for personal enjoyment, keep making it.